No black cats, just straight facts. Triple P certified. Listen, we can talk about odds all day. It doesn't matter what the odds are. It matters what's gonna happen. Welcome to the Perfect Play Pursuit, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is I, Lukey CK, joined as always by the Euro Under King. Danny, the Batman, as you know, has made uh, several enemies since the starting of this show. And uh, he's in, in this episode, dude. I don't... <laughs> he's in Italy, as you may know. Um, the Vittori crime family has descended upon Dan uh, off the coast of uh, the Isle of Capri. And uh, Dan has been fitted for some granite slippers by the Vittori crime family. Um, if you know this show, you know that Dan has taken shots at Marvin Vittori, called him a fake Italian, and then had the gall, the audacity, the sheer stupidity if you ask me to go to Italy um, for his honeymoon. And uh, I don't think he'll be returning. Last I heard, they asked the Vittori crime family, asked for a hefty ransom, a ransom which we will not pay. Uh, we do not negotiate. We do not. We do, anyway, guys, welcome to the Purple Labor Suit. Dan is still not here. He's on his honeymoon. Alex is here, back from Puerto Rico. And I will be leaving for the West Coast tomorrow. So uh, we got bros in different area codes. But if you want Dan's picks, he got him in his open bet sheet last week if you're in the Patreon. And if you want Dan's picks for Luke versus RDA, you're going to get them in the Patreon. That's right, in the open bet sheet. That's where you will find Dan's picks for this week. But me and Alex are here. We're holding it down. We're grieving. Alex is in his black sweatshirt. Uh, I'm in my black hat. And uh, we're, we're in mourning, as I'm sure a lot of the MMA community is. But ultimately, I refuse to, to uh, let today be a dark day. Because today, while it is the day that Nate Diaz, um, you know, we're coming off the weekend that Nate Diaz fell, was knocked down, much like a Juan Anderson Silva um, by, by Jake Paul. Today may be a day that one of my favorite fighters has fallen, but it's a day that I uh, have gotten a new favorite fighter, and that's Jake Paul. So <laughs> I just want to say um, next week, right next to this, I ha I'm having commissioned an artistic Jake Paul headshot that will be placed right next to John Jones, possibly above John Jones. Um, we'll see where I can get the geography. I'll have to position it appropriately. But um, in the UFC, in the MMA space, in the MMA community, if your favorite fighter gets beaten – then you, whoever beat your favorite fighter becomes your favorite fighter. Um, I don't make the rules. This is just how it works. So Nate Diaz was one of my favorite fighters at one time. And he, you know, there are consequences, guys. I, you know, and, and there, the, the, this is the spoils of war. So I'm sorry, Nate, but if, if, if we're at a dance, I have to dance with Jake now. And if we're at um, a restaurant, I have to sit with Jake. And if we're at an autograph signing, I have to go up to Jake first. He is my favorite fighter, Jake Paul, John Jones. Um, they're my two favorite fighters, Jake Paul and John Jones. So um, it is what it is. Uh... No, I think Nate won. <laughs> I, I think that Nate won the fight. I think it was highway robbery. I think it should have been a unanimous decision, decision Nate Diaz. Um, but it wasn't in our favor, Lukey. We, we got unlucky with a, with a crab in a bucket referee. I honestly don't even know who those people are. <laughs> what do you think, Alex? What do you mean, what do I think? Please don't ask me any dumb questions. I I um I don't really think much of the fight. I think we can't really put our money on Nate Diaz anymore, but um he's still my favorite fighter and I still want him to win every fight. And he, I once you start realizing his rules, then you can't get mad at him. You know, like, you know his rules. Like, his rules, he won that fight. He got him in the guillotine. He killed him. It's over. If the ref wasn't there, it's over. Nate Diaz won. I know. I knew I was going to lose my bet. I bet pretty heavily on Diaz against Ferguson. He was an underdog in that fight. I won on that. So, um, I felt the need to kind of uh, pay it forward a little bit uh, with Nate being an even greater underdog here. And I did. I put a massive bet on Nate. And I put it on knowing that I was up against all odds um knowing that this was enemy territory knowing that 
This is the, his first time doing it. I mean, I pretty much knew that bet was going to lose when I placed it. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, but I felt like I had to do it. I don't know why. I mean, Drake made that post. He said, my mama raised me right. I don't bet against the Diaz brothers. Simple as that. I mean, I love Nate Diaz. I felt like maybe, just maybe, if I put a little karmic energy into Nate, if I put a little support behind him, then the fight gods would reward both of us yet again. Now, I know everything Alex just said. I know it by heart. I know that the Diaz brothers go by the Diaz brothers' rules, and that if you ever expect them to go in and, and win in the judges' eyes, they're going to be sorely disappointed. I've watched Nick fight GSP. I've watched Nick fight Anderson Silva, and I really wanted him to – you know, get the win in both those situations. And I think that if, you know, if you're going by Nick Diaz rules, he did win those fights, but uh, not by the 10-9 the, the must scoring system. So here's the thing. J- well, what do we do? What do we, where do we go from here? Where, where I want to go from here is I'm not buying any more pay-per-views that aren't UFC pay-per-views. <laughs> that, there's my line in the sand. I'm drawing it right now. I don't enjoy these boxing events. Like I don't like them. I don't, find it entertaining you know what i mean so it's like when i tune in i don't like any of the fights before i don't like the jake paul versus diaz but even that one i didn't like i only liked it because i knew the people it would be like if i went to go see my little cousin play basketball i went to go see you know alex uh golf in a charity golf match i don't really care about what i'm watching i just know alex's face i'm like hey look there's alex so i'm like hey look there's nate diaz like that was why this was entertaining but really i don't care about boxing I don't trust boxing. Um, I mean, no matter how you slice it, right, boxing is is losing in all this. Because if if guys with the striking pedigree of a Nate Diaz, of an Anderson Silva, can go in there and, A, not look as good as they did in the UFC because of the boxing rule set, it's like, well, then how how effective is boxing if, in order to do it properly, you have to eliminate so much of the criteria that in the streets would be available? Right. So it's like, why even do it then if we have to chim- chisel it down to this place where it's so unrecognizable? Like, at least you can say wrestling has a place in the streets. Right. Like if you wrestle in high school and all you know is wrestling, you can defend yourself in the streets. You can take somebody down. Right. If all you know is boxing, I'm not sure that's the case. If all you know is jujitsu, I'm not sure that that's the case anymore. You know, um, and it, it pains me to say this because I respect both of the martial arts, but. I'm starting to think they are but an illusion. Yeah, I mean, Buchecha got beaten by Rugrug and won this weekend as well. Buchecha, like, apparently one of the best jujitsu guys around, and he gets beat by Rugrug, some uh, really big jack guy who's very uh, athletic. But it's just surprising to see somebody who's at the top of their game in one discipline, not succeed in MMA. It's not effective. You got to get good at all of them. John Jones is like a blue belt, you know? Right, but Nate Diaz, people said he had good boxing. You know what I mean? And Andre Ward said he had good boxing, and he boxes, and he has uh, a, he's worn the big boxing belt and the big boxing gloves and the headgear before and done all that before. Like, it's not like this was a brand new thing to him. Like, and he, like it was Woodley or Askren, you know what I mean? So it's a little bit of a different thing in this case. Same with Anderson Silva. It's like, Anderson Silva and Nate Diaz both got dropped and knocked down by somebody with four four fights, like really no fights. Jake Paul, really the only fight he's actually had besides Silva and Diaz was Tommy Fury. So it's like by the time he fought Anderson Silva, he really had had no fights because he'd only fought the basketball player, the YouTuber, Ben Askren and Tyron Woodley. So, you know, so it's like none of these guys, there's no data to really even collect. It's like, you don't, I, I'm just left feeling like, what did we learn here, right? Like, wh- what was proven here? What, what did we, what, what was, what new information do I have coming out of this event? You know, it feels muddier than ever. It feels muddier than ever. So I personally won't be buying any more boxing pay-per-views for the foreseeable future. I'm not going to, I'm not even going to entertain this PFL, MMA, Nate Diaz versus Jake Paul in MMA. I'm not, I'm not entertaining it. I'm not entertaining it. Why not? I'm going to entertain it, but here's why I don't want to. I don't want to entertain it because I feel like Nate Diaz is going to go in there and have a boxing match in MMA and lose. (laughs) I feel like he's not going to do jujitsu because it's one of two things, right? 
if I were Jake Paul, I would be silently training jujitsu in the background of my life, and I would have like a purple belt or like a bl- deep blue, almost purple, maybe a brown belt by now, just working one on one, one on three with like a few guys, me, a couple of my pe- boys. We get like literally Marcelo Garcia to come and give us personals. You know what I mean? Like I would be silently working on all that as we speak. And I think he is. So my thesis is like Nate being a vegan pescatarian Stockton, California soy boy. And Jake, (laughs) by all measures looking like he's eating Mexican horse meat. uh, (laughs) It's like, how's the MMA fight going to look? Jake's going to win. (laughs) <laughs> he's going to beat his ass you think so? Nate barely beat old ass Tony you know it wasn't until Tony shot in for the guillotine and Nate had been working on the guillotine so much for the Hamzat situation that he was able to get it but if he's in there with Jake you know he's not going to shoot a takedown on him you know he's not going to like do a submission unless Jake shoots in on him and he's not gonna you know and Nate's not a kicker it's not like so. so all of this it's like two – it's a stacked deck in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I just don't think you can bet on the Diaz brothers because of their rules. They have the rules, but they always win. In my opinion, they won the fight. But at the end of the day, drafting Kings- got dropped. You know as well as I do. Playground rules, if you get dropped in the fight – you lost the fight. If you he got the you know, guillotine, point he hit you and you fell to the ground. Like he that's got all the guillotine. That's all Luke. That that's all he that got matters. the guillotine and a double leg takedown in the fight, bro. He didn't get the guillotine. He didn't choke him out. So he he Nate. All that happened was Nate did a guillotine and then he allowed a little pipsqueak ref to stop him from doing it. <laughs> you know, what I mean? I, this is what I said during the fight to my girlfriend. I said, "I'm so sick of performance art." <laughs> <laughs> I used to love the performance art of the Diaz brothers, of Anderson Silva, of BJ Penn, of all these guys. The performance art of their fights. I used to love it. As a better, I abhor it. <laughs> As a oh, better, yeah. there's nothing I hate more than I hate hot dogging. Let's betting, just uh, yeah, betting on the let's sport just win this kind thing. of it is it is ruined it, but it's also brought out the purest like part of me that like actually does want to just see what's the truth. Like, I don't want to see any more. I want to see the right guy win every time I want dynasties. I want Patriots. You know what I mean? I want Anderson Silva. I want John Jones's that's, those are the types of people I was like, and and I want predictability, you know, (laughs) it would make our job a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, So guys, uh, you notice we didn't even talk about the UFC event because why would we? Uh, but I, th- I have some notes here. Let me let me just write, read some of my notes. Jake Hadley is a punk. That's what I wrote here. I don't. I wrote it. Uh, I, we sure will be certified Jake Hadley. Uh, but as I saw the weigh-ins, I, I switched my opinion. And I reflected that in my open bet sheet in the Patreon. So if you're ever thinking like, oh, I'm coming onto the show. I'm watching these boys give their picks. They sure will be certified somebody. But... Obviously, we do this, these picks way early out, if not before the weigh-ins, two weeks out sometimes, every time, and then we come back and we revisit it. So I'm just saying, guys, like, don't, like, get mad at me if I switch my pick. You can always see how I'm betting in the Patreon open bet sheet. So um, it will always be reflected there. So I did play Cody Durden a little bit. Um, I, I won some money on Cody Durden um, as an underdog. But Hadley saying that, like, he – he blaming this whole thing on the weight cut. Hadley, it had nothing to do with the weight cut. It had everything to do with the fact that you can't wrestle and your jujitsu is not good enough to submit a guy in a five-minute scenario. And Cody Durden had better wrestling than you, and you accept bottom position. You have translucent, paper-thin skin, and you bleed like a stuffed pig. And it's like, <laughs> you're a punk. Hadley's a punk. To blame it on the weight cut, something you do to maintain and gain a, an advantage over a smaller opponent. Uh, I don't understand what these guys think they're in. What do these guys think they're saying when they say what they say? You know what I mean? <laughs> when these guys say what they say, what do they think they're saying? Because what I'm hearing is I'm a coward. I don't want to fight people my own size. So I starve and suck all the water out of my body so that I can have an advantage over smaller men. And in doing this, I wanted such an advantage. I wanted such one that I sucked so much water in and fluid and and food out of my body 
that I almost died. I was so terrified of just fighting somebody my own size that I <laughs> almost died trying to gain an advantage over a smaller man. And in this effort, ironically enough, I was unable to perform as if cursed by God for my for my uh, what's the word ambition for my for my uh, attempt to unfairly cheat and exploit and manipulate the rule structure that is meant to provide fair competition that is meant to say hey this weight can be to this weight pretty simple right but you guys have to sneak and cheat and manipulate the rules to your to gain an advantage and what happens you end up looking like an idiot because everybody does it so then you don't get an advantage and you all are just in an arms race of who can be dumber and the answer this time was hadley you were dumber and you lost not because of the weight cut because you don't have any american wrestling you're from across the pond where you can't find a wrestling boot at any pay less okay so i don't want to hear it from you hadley you're a punk and you stink back to the wrestling room your jujitsu just ain't that good. Even Eddie Bravo said it. So <laughs> did um, that's number one. Number one. Got that off. Wait, my when did Eddie Bravo say that? Come on, man. Don't make me cite my sources over here. <laughs> this show is for entertainment purposes only, dude. I imagined that Eddie said that um, during the fight companion. And when you look into it, you might find that he didn't say it, but I, <laughs> I just wanted listen. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, okay, so I covered two things on the list. Don't MMA fight Jake Paul, and Nate. You will lose. <laughs> Jake Hadley is a punk. The Rock is a punk. Uh, the Rock's <laughs> a punk, dude. The Rock only wants to do a nice thing when everyone's watching, right? Um, the oh, don't be a Mr. Beast hater, dude. Come dude, on, he Mr. The Beast. Rock, oh, the... He bought Femba Garimbo a house only because he heard Colby Covington was doing nice things for him, and he wanted to one up him. He's not trying to do anything <laughs> nice for anybody unless he can spite someone else in the process. That's first of all. Go find a charity case that no one's helping. Colby was already helping him. He already had him. He was already covering this guy. Why Why not go find a charity case that nobody knows, you know? Um, so, yeah, The Rock just wants to get some clout. If The Rock really cared about any fighter, he wouldn't have designed such a wax shoe. He'd pay him more to wear it. <laughs> and even, hey, even if he doesn't pay them to wear his shoe, just go on their fucking podcast or their Instagram live or take a picture with them at the fucking event he the rock won't even sniff a prelim fighter he, he if, a, if a prelim fighter gets near the rock the rock has a person that he paid they wear gloves and they eschew them away so it's like don't he was hugging me. up on themba garimbo luke what he was hugging up on themba garimbo he's, well, he's that's only when he realized there was something that there was an opportunity here to showcase what a good guy he is and help somebody that was already being helped by somebody who is you know public enemy number one persona non grata so now he got to like get everybody you know what i mean on board with team rock who hates colby and it was very self-serving i thought and if i were themba i would say i would look him right in the eyes and i would say the most proud moment in a man's life is the day he buys his first house i would never let you rob me of that moment but i will shake your hand i will accept your friendship and maybe you can teach me what you know about business so I can buy my own house because we can never truly be friends in this dynamic of you handing me a house, something that should be the most proud thing I've ever bought in my life next to the wedding ring I bought my wife or the, or the, or the first fucking bassinet I bought my child, right? So, the song that always plays in the tape videos. <laughs> well, yeah, you can take that house and shove it, Rock. That's what I would say to The Rock. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, Nick Diaz. We're going back to the Jake Paul event now. This is my notes. Nick Diaz is giving – this is my favorite fighter. I love Nick Diaz. He is giving child star vibes. He is giving former child star vibes at this event. Okay? He showed up at that event. I don't know if he was off the tequila again. I don't know if he was off the sativa again. But he was acting wild. <laughs> he, I, I couldn't tell when he was talking to Helwani and Hardy. I mean, the best thing he could have done was just smack Dan Hardy right then and there and be like, I'll fight your fucking ass next, bitch, and smack him. That's what he should have done. Him and Dan should have fucking got something going right then and there because that's a fair fight. That's a fair fight. Two old heads like that, two, you know what I mean? That's a fair fight. But Nick was out here talking about fighting Nate. <laughs> that's kind of how it sounded to me. He's like, I work harder than both these guys. Uh, I, I, I'm like, okay. Like, I feel you. And it was cool. I love Nick. But it, he, it seemed – a little pleady from my, you know what I mean? From my liking that it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't this. Hey, I'm not. 
was you're taking everything I work for. I thought I had that drop. But, you know, it wasn't the whole, like, where you at, George? Remember, where you at, George? That was sick. That was sick. And then George was in the crowd. And he was scared. He was scared. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I'll never forget. He was with a very bodacious blonde woman in the crowd that night. I remember <laughs> that. And, yeah, it was after he beat BJ Penn. Um, you know, at least BJ is still fucking acting, like, cool. You know what I mean? Still fucking big time cool guy. Go follow BJ Penn on Instagram. He is the man. I love BJ Penn. I endorse... I don't even know if I, I endorse. <laughs> I don't know what he said lately. I endorse everything I've seen. <laughs> but it's That's very vague. Um, okay. So, in my notes, I have cut Ode Osborne, and, and really just for his own benefit. I mean, there's just nothing even for him here. Like, you, if you can't keep the gate, you can't keep the gate. You're at the, you're the first fight of the night fighting a guy who's never fought in the UFC before, and you're getting finished. So, this is what a prelim, like. This, sometimes I say cut these fighters because I hate them or because their appearance uh, in the, their in-fight performance was so they did something that slighted me. They did something that violated my personal code of conduct. Ode didn't do that. He just deserves to be cut because he wins uh, not very much and loses emphatically. And he was on the first fight of the night of the prelims. It's called prelims because they are it's right before you're eliminated. Pre-eliminary, right? You're it's right, right about to be eliminated. So... Cut Ode. If you can't keep the gate, you can't keep the gate. Um, what else? <laughs> the, funniest you thing, the funniest thing of the night, Alex. Alexa Kamor. Tanner. Okay. Bo- okay. They I didn't see this one. They kept mentioning that Alexa Kamor was brought, was, uh, was helping Stipe prepare for Nganu by emulating Nganu. They kept saying it. And I kept looking at my girlfriend. I was like, I was like, <laughs> this guy like, this guy in Nganu <laughs> same style I, I I no wonder they brought I mean it was hilarious so I just wrote Kimor virtually equals, identical I just, wrote, I just wrote Kimor equals Nganu <laughs> I'm like what would Nganu do to Tanner Bozer <laughs> I was like what did they have him doing in the camp like, besides, like, I'm like, you should have said he was a punching bag for Stipe when he was preparing for <laughs> Francis Ngannou. Oh, my gosh. How do you even emulate Francis Ngannou? <laughs> like, imagine Francis fighting Jorginho Rosenstrike. Okay? Yeah. That, that 10 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> have Alexa Kamor start at one end of the cage and run at you. And just, <laughs> like, is that what he had him doing? Is that why Alexa Kamor sucks? Because he had him do that 10 times in a row and fucking he stepped to the side and jabbed him and knocked him out 10 times. All right. Um. Kennedy and Chuck Wee fight was stopped too early. You picked uh, Mr. Mr. Big Hall, Big Hossy, the yeah. biggest boss, Dustin Jacoby. Yeah, Jacoby was my guy. Um, I actually didn't do do bad on the night. I went eight and eleven. Biggest L was Jeremiah Wells for me. I had him on every single parlay. Yeah, he's winning. I mean, it's tough. It's, right? it, just it's, got exhausted. That, that's what I'm saying. That's the biggest loss for me. I felt I literally got up to get a beer. And then walked back, and they were reading the decision. I was like, oh, dang, did I take that long? And then because he was just dominating the entire fight, I'm like, oh, I must have took the whole round. And then I kind of saw the look on Jeremiah Wells' face, and it didn't look too pleased. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Come on. No. Why? Those moments are the worst. I know. It's the worst. Worst. You're trying to figure out what happened, and you're trying to make a scenario (laughs) in your head. That isn't the truth. Exactly. Like maybe he's crying because his mother just passed and he's just emotional as he's about to give a <laughs> speech. He's crying out of joy. Oh my gosh. Exactly. Exactly. And it was just a terrible experience. So I was light on the rest of the night. I didn't really put anything else in. Um, but didn't see the rest of the fights from then on, Luke. Listen, dude, you didn't miss much. Um, I'm just going to tell you that uh, Diego Rob- Lopes. Oh, he's amazing. Triple P certified, right? Oh, yeah. Diego Lopez is amazing. Lopes is amazing. I love that man more than anything in the world. Um, I want him. I wish nothing but the success of gods for him. I'll be betting on him in every single fight. Uh, Kendi and Shukwe fight was stopped early. The thing that I wrote here, font equals incompetent. <laughs> Rob Font is an, is an incompetent. Um, Tyson Chartier is an incompetent coach um the cleveland new england cartel is an incompetent gym um 
They stink, all of them. Rob Font, this is my biggest thing about Rob Font. He has this thing where he looks like an emo girl that is cold when it's not really cold out. You know what I mean? Like how they kind of go like, <sighs> like they, they like shiver when it's not cold. You know what I mean? He has that. Like in the quarter, he's like, <sighs> yes, sir, yes, sir. he's like, t- like, I don't know what this is happening. He's like, it's a combination of like, he wants you to know he's really focused and getting, but it's, you're not focused. You know what I mean? But you're not, you know what I mean? You want to be like, Hey, can you look at me? Can you look up and stop shaking for a second and lower your shoulders and relax for a second and just fucking think about that shrimp thing that you learned on day one of jujitsu. <laughs> what are you doing? What's with the butterfly guard? You're not Marcelo Garcia. You're you, what is going on? This is Corey fucking Sandhagen. You're not going to butterfly guard him out. Of, you're not going to butterfly guard your way out of this. Um, and I knew that Sandhagen was so good where Rob Font was so – and not so good. He's just medium where Rob Font – there's such a gap between Sandhagen. But So here's the funniest part of this all, right? Corey Sandhagen cannot find a way to not shoot himself right in the head of his dick every time he gets a little bit of momentum – with the fans, he takes three steps way back every single fucking time. And you know, because I used to hate Corey Sanhagen on this podcast when we started four years ago. I talked all kinds of shit about Corey Sanhagen. Then when he fought Peter Yan, a fight that he did not win on the judges' scorecard, I started to love him. I said, I respect this man now. And I turned full circle and became a fan. But where am I at now? Now I got to think, Corey. You had the fucking arena. You papered to the fucking rafters with your name, okay? Sold out. Main event. Everyone in there. Everyone in there is a UFC fan from Tennessee. You think they never heard the name Nate Diaz or Jake Paul by chance? They have. Do you think (laughs) they didn't know? Clock's ticking. We want to be done this shit in time to still capitalize on the evening and watch the Jake Paul Nate Diaz boxing match? They did. And what did you do? You decided to sit there and bore them to fucking death for five rounds. You decided to bore a bunch of Titans of Tennessee volunteers with a bunch of crotch sniffing and leg humping. I mean, I can't think of a big, of, of a bigger way to become a heel to all of the South than to do what you went in there and did. I mean, you just came up, came down from the mountains and bored them all to death. You put them all to sleep. And Dana White walked out. I'm not surprised. I turned the fucking fight off in the third round. I turned the fucking fight off. I was like, I don't give a fuck about this anymore. So I don't. <laughs> you know? So um, not surprised. Rob Font, everything you did was not good. Corey Sanhagen, everything you did was also not good. Next time, don't take the main event spot. Wait for Umar. We were all so excited to see how Umar and Sanhagen were going to strike against one another. That was going to be really cool to see. Umar's fast, katana like kicks. Sanhagen's elusive kind of traps and his knees and his, his kicks. And, and okay, Rob Font, he, hey, he, hey, that's great. He's got great boxing. And this is going to still be a striker's delight. Wow, great fight. And then you go in there and just prevent that from happening. This could have been a fight where you won, a five round war where you, people go, yo, Corey Sanhagen's the shit. Put him next up against O'Malley and fucking Aljo, you know? But no, not anymore. Do you realize, Corey, that next week? I mean, this is why Chael Sonnen calls it pulling a Sanhagen. I even wrote on my notes. Cor- I wrote Fonts equals incompetent. Corey equals Sanhagen. <laughs> Sanhagen. I mean, Corey's a total Sanhagen. He just he just Sanhags his way out of every situation. You have the fight next, Aljo, the guy who choked you out, Sugar Sean, the money fight. This is it. That's next weekend. You're this weekend. You're synced up. Finish Fonts. Or have a fucking sick ass war that leaves everybody remembering your name, and then go into the title fight. But you didn't. You failed. And then he goes and tells Henry Cejudo, "Hey, Mister, you already got a great opportunity gifted to you by getting a title shot off your retirement. You're at least one or two away now." He told him he was one or two away. <laughs> he told Henry Cejudo he was one or two away. Why one or two? Why not seven? Why wouldn't if you're making the rules, Corey? Why wouldn't you position him seven fights away? I would have said. Henry, you're seven fights away from a fucking title shot. You stink, right? But no, you didn't. You said you're one or two. Okay. I'm Henry. I'm like, you heard him. 
Like, if I win one more, I'm fighting that title. You heard saying, Hagen. <laughs> I mean, how dumb can you be? There was another dumb thing he did. Oh, posting about his injury, Alex. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Dude, he he posted an emoji. It was like the the side, the not smile, not frown, like the what are you going to do kind of face. Uh-huh. And it's like, he was like, left picture of the injury. Chael Sonnen's already cringing. I'm cringing. Me and Chael are laughing at you, Corey. Me and Chael Sonnen are having glasses of sparkling iced seltzer water with a twist of lemon that his lovely wife brought out to the pool. Me and him are cheersing and laughing at you hysterically because you posted a picture of your injury. And then, and then, right? That was just at the picture. So me and him go, oh my God, oh my God. And then we see the what you wrote and we start laughing again. I mean, he goes... Yup, torn tricep with the emoji face. And he's like, what are you? In? It's like, Corey, that's not even a real injury. <laughs> like, that's an injury that, like, my aunt would still go to her office job with. You know what I mean? Like, she wouldn't even, like, I, I know people who, like, have had broken bones and still showed up to their office job the next day. His job is to fight. And he, and the, Alex, I got to read you what he said. Do you even know? Do you know? No, I don't know what he said. I oh, just okay. saw oh, that he was oh, injured, oh, apparently. I screenshotted it. I did. <clears throat> okay, here it is. And he was using that as the excuse for why he was wrestling. Yeah, here it is. There's the picture, okay? Uh-huh. Look at that, dude. It's, it's, it's like a guy, it's like a guy showing off his new tattoo in high school. Mm-hmm. It's like the picture of Sugar Sean holding like the four ones and the 20 <laughs> in the mirror. So he goes, fully torn tricep in round one. With the face. I had to let you know it was round one. Mm. I had to let you know. And all the volunteers in Texas are going, you couldn't have just tapped out in round one, saved us all fucking fighting to get through traffic on the way home. Um, he goes, wasn't able to punch or elbow with that arm. With So that's all he needed to say. Wasn't able to punch or elbow with that arm. Right? People would be like, oh, okay. But he goes, without pain and it feeling like shit. So you could have punched with it. It just would have caused you pain and it would have felt like shit. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. Because now I know that. And I'm now mad at you. So <laughs> I'm actually so mad at you. Cody Durden's arm probably hurt a lot during his fight. I would think. I would think Cody Durden's arm hurt quite would, a bit. What would Greg Jackson say? I tore my tricep. He would say, hit him with it. George St. Pierre. Anyway, he goes, did what I had to do to win that night. Surgery this week. Back soon. Corey. Never come back as long as you live. I don't give a fuck. And <laughs> you did what you had to do. You set yourself back fathoms. Leaves. You are under the sea. You are where that submarine was. The pressure is about to cause you to implode, Corey. So please <laughs> shut the fuck up for the rest of – until this – get the surgery. I don't want to hear a word about it. Don't be telling the schmo – don't let me see you on the schmo zone I don't, or the schmo, not, not the schmo zone or an individual 15 minute interview. I don't want to see Corey Sanagan's face. Okay. <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do my best to make sure that doesn't I don't happen. want the schmo because you know the schmo is going to come in and just soften the edges for everybody. Like, yeah, that torn tricep. Tell us about the surgery. <laughs> no, don't tell us about the surgery. Tell us why you behaved cowardly in a ultimate fight. An ultimate fight within the ultimate fighting championship. We should start calling them ultimate fights. That way they all start to put a little bit more respect on what they're doing. You know what I mean? It's like because if you won't respect your craft, let me empower you and offer you a way to possibly respect. So Corey Sanning was in an ultimate fight and he couldn't punch with his arm without it hurting or feeling like shit. So he decided just, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to entertain these fans, you know, but I'll still, you know, at a bar, tell some girl that I'm a gladiator. It's like a modern, it's kind of like modern day gladiator, you know, it's, I'll tell them that. I'll tell them, you know, yeah, I just read these books about warfare to put myself in a war, a war set, a mindset, a grind set. <laughs> he says this shit. Corey says this shit. He's like, I started to read old books about be kill or be killed and war minds and samurais and but your elbow hurt a little bit and you decided to just be boring as all fucking hell for 25 minutes while people had shit to do like we had shit to do don't say we didn't we did okay i'm disgusted by Corey sandhagen and with that 
I think we can move into a 10 fight little snack pack offering with two championships on the line, both snack size as well. Um, we'll get into these championship fights. Aljamain Sterling's taking on Sugar Sean O'Malley, and Wei Li Zhang is taking on Amanda Lemosh. 10 fight offering from Boston, Massachusetts, UFC 292. Live from Boston. It's going to be at the TD Garden. Ten fights. Probably going to add some more, but this is what we got for you right now. This is a super early breakdown. 8, 19, 2023 at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Early prelims are kicking off. Guys, I gave you enough information. Let's get to the breakdown. I mean, we got full card, main card and prelims breakdown for you. Early breakdown. Um, Fun fact, Henry Cejudo versus Marlon Vera also supposed to be on this card. And Rob Font versus Yadong Song also supposed to be on this card. Song with Drew. Which makes Rob Font's um, act even less courageous. <laughs> Are you preparing to fight somebody a week later? You didn't take this on short notice. You took this a little earlier than you thought. A one week earlier than you thought. Like, what? And what is with these guys needing to be so dialed in and calibrated? Like, <laughs> you're either a warrior or you're not. You're either about this fucking life or you're not. If somebody can run up on you in the streets and you're not dialed in enough to be the guy you are in the cage on the streets, then what's the point of this? Like, what's the, what's the point of even doing this? I could throw, I could, I could catch Tom Brady out of a fucking stupor, toss him a football and he'll bomb that shit 90 yards. You know what I mean? Like, why can't you fight like all the time? I don't understand why you can't always fight, you know? Anyway, I'm still annoyed. I'm still very annoyed. This was an annoying weekend, everybody. And I'm hoping that as the show goes on, I can kind of come in. If Dan were here, he would, he would be able to soften me a little bit, but Alex is just riling me up. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to take her off, wind down. I got a beverage. Um, we're here, guys. We're here. We're about to fucking break down Sugar Sean versus Aljamain Sterling full card UFC 292, top to bottom, main card and prelims for free for you here on YouTube. And after that, Alex and I are gonna hop onto the Patreon channel. So if you love the show, if you want to uh, fucking support the show, if you want to help us to grow the show um go to the patreon subscribe get in there for the full year you'll get a discount and when you're in there uh you'll find all of our picks listed out nice and neatly for you you'll find google sheets that have our open bets that we're placing so if we change our mind fucking two minutes before the fight starts you'll be able to see more reflectively our decision making as the fights get closer um after the episode has already been out you can dm us you can talk to us and you get an extra episode. Really, it's all, all you get to do is support support the show. That's all we're promising is that if you go to the Patreon, you can donate, pay for um, this entertainment that you so, so love so very much. And we love doing. We love providing for you. So um, without further ado, um, if you're looking for the breakdown of RDA versus Luke, we did a full main card and prelims breakdown. It's right behind this video. You can watch that. Alex and I went through it top to bottom. We're going to go through it one more time in the patreon after this episode's done uh if you want to get that episode subscribe to the patreon but for now we're going to get ahead of ufc 292 and break down sugar sean o'malley versus aljamain sterling alex any final words any one thing you want to put a bow on uh either the diaz card or ufc nashville do you feel bad for the i know you didn't see the main event but do you feel bad for them the people of nashville who were there <laughs> i did not see the fight and i probably won't ever see the fight considering how you talked about it but um yeah, I do feel bad for the people of Nashville if it was that much of a snooze fest. I mean, even Dana White decided the Nate Diaz fight was more important, so he was making his arrangements to watch that, I'd imagine. And okay. um, and I still think Nate Diaz won. Diaz rules states that if, you know, you clown enough, if you clown enough in there, hot dog enough in there, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and you just need to make your opponent look like a fool. And then you win. All right. I'm disappointed. I mean, uh, not in, not in Nate. I'm disappointed in my community, in myself. I'm disappointed that we allowed um, ourselves to be called into the rocks like sirens, uh, like, like like sailors by sirens. I don't like that we're going into these places and dragging our fans in, and I'm paying money now to watch this pay per view that I don't even watch any fight except the last one, and then what I want to happen doesn't happen, and then I lose money gambling on it. I got to opt out at this point. I got to opt out. But here's what I will say to put a bow on the Jake Paul and Nate Diaz event. And this is a positive thing I'll say to my new favorite fighter, Jake Paul. Uh, Jake, <laughs> you guys did a really great job this time around improving upon what you've been doing, um, specifically the Ben Askren fight. You know, Michael Buffer announced the fight and he said, Ben Askew. 
<laughs> he called him Ben Askew. Uh, so you, they were kind of doing a lot to like promote Jake and demote the opponent in a lot of these fights and to like fuck with the opponent too. Like there was a lot of like this Miyamoto Musashi, like, you know, gamesmanship stuff. I feel like, um, like to, to like mess with them and put them off kilter and stuff. And I feel that Nate was respected and accommodated and was talked about respectfully by the announcer, by the, by everybody. I feel like every, I think everything was handled very respectfully. I think Jake, was informed that, Hey, maybe the way to win fans is not to call, do what Connor's doing, you know, and make fun of Nate and stuff, but instead to like be boys with Nate and kind of look at it like, you know, this is, uh, this is your, this is like his G test. Like Nate, Nate Nate's G testing them. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like he kind of chose that. Like he, he kind of big made Nate the big brother, the OG who's just kind of he jumped, jumped him in, in. jumped him in. <laughs> exactly. So, he really did that well. Um, I think that the respect shown, if if anything were to get me to buy the next one, it would be that. But, and I'll admit, you know, a Jake Paul and Nate Diaz pay per view in the PFL in MMA is certainly something I'm going to buy. But I'll I'll be betting on Jake Paul. Um, <laughs> so far, I'm 0 for six betting on Jake Paul. I bet on, I picked Woodley twice. I picked Askren. I picked. Fucking Anderson Silva, I picked Nate Diaz, and I even picked Jake to beat Tommy Fury in the one fight <laughs> to win. He lost, so maybe my streak will continue, and I will go zero for eight, and uh, Nate will guillotine Jake, and we can all fucking go home. Because really, it's like Nate's been a black belt in jujitsu for a very long time, and all of jujitsu needs to go to Nate and say, "Listen, motherfucker, don't fuck around here. You're a Caesar Gracie black belt." You're a Caesar, that let's say Gracie black belt. Okay. So if you go in here and Caesar, you better hope that you weren't just giving Nate that black belt because he was famous now. You better hope that that's a real black belt on Nate because if Jake Paul, if Nate can't submit Jake Paul with his black belt, AJ Agazarm submitted Jake Paul. That's what I'm saying, guys. I mean, if, if, and I'm not saying Jake hasn't or couldn't have gotten a lot better since then. I, I personally believe. If Jake Paul put his mind to it, he could be a black belt in jiu-jitsu. If, you know, if he had started years ago, he, he could be that by now or by the time. But but if, if Jake's really thinks, which I can't believe he does, but if he really thinks what he said in the press conference, which is like, yeah, you know, I have really great takedown defense. And uh, if you give me, you know, six or seven weeks, I'll be able to, like, beat him in an MMA fight. If he really thinks that is enough time to stop Nate from submitting him, if he's not, like, actually trained jiu-jitsu, if he's a white belt, if he's a white belt right now, and he thinks, and he has not like taken jujitsu classes. If he thinks that's enough, that's very naive. And that attitude needs to be snuffed out if jujitsu is to have any respect. And if these long black belt processes, I mean, they gave a black belt to a guy for 16 years to keep him fucking paying his membership dues. I mean, it's like if if you're saying that it's that it's such a sophistication. To, I mean, and I think it is, by the way. I think if I, I love jujitsu, I'm just saying, if you think that, you know, if these instructors want to put so much haughtiness on the art the gentle art nate better choke jake paul out in about one minute unless jake paul has secretly been training jujitsu unless right but you know i want to know i want to know the credentials as as it all comes out in the interviews up i want people asking jake how many hours have you spent training brazilian jujitsu where did you train was this a private lesson did you have your friends in there were you training with your friend and the guy was in trick or was it just you and an instructor did you go to a jujitsu school in puerto rico and just start training like what what is your knowledge of jujitsu. I need to know that before I even handicap this fight. But we say all the time, jujitsu doesn't really work. And if Jake, you know, it, it's, 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 a, it's a, I, I think he could probably not get submitted by Nate Diaz. <laughs> if, he, if he doesn't shoot. You're him, really drinking the Kool-Aid now. He's my favorite fighter. <laughs> so, all right. Um, one last thing, Dan Hardy said in regards to this MMA fight, when they were talking about it, he goes, and Jake, you know, he's a great wrestler. He goes, he wrestled at uh, Ohio State, I believe. <laughs> That's hilarious. I said to my girlfriend, I was like, I'm going to forgive Dan Hardy for this one because he's from across the pond. But Dan Hardy just mis- mistook the Ohio State with the state of Ohio. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd like that one. That's uh, beautiful. That, that was hilarious. I mean. Dan, if Jake Paul wrestled Division One at the Ohio State University, uh, 
why he would wouldn't he be, be boxing, boxing right now? <laughs> <laughs> why would he choose to box instead of doing MMA? That doesn't make any sense. It's like, uh, like that's literally as dumb as Ben Askren boxing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, Jake Paul's right. a Division One wrestler who's never fought MMA, but just decided to also be a, the biggest boxer ever. Like, yeah, if, he, if that were true, he'd be the greatest athlete of all time. If you were a Division One wrestler and then went on to be the highest paid boxer. I mean, that's what Aaron Pico did. He was, he was really good at wrestling, and then all of a sudden was just like, I'd love to box. Yeah, I'm and hanging out with Freddie Virgil. I think boxing are very similar, to be honest. I think it's very similar, you know, like where you need your opponent to be to execute a takedown footwork-wise is the same in wrestling as it is in boxing, the exact same. And what you do to touch and connect them with hand fighting and collar tying is in reflex-wise very similar to boxing. So there's... Oh. A very smooth transition, I think, even more so. Speaking of boxing, before we get into the next part of the episode, can we talk about that Francis Ngannou and Mike Tyson video? Please. Oh, the one where it was Darren Till taking down – oh, Mike Tyson. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Francis – Darren Till taking down Tyson. I like that one too. I like that one too. And people are saying that this guy has a chance against John Jones and Darren Till, D1 Till, is just (laughs) ragdolling Tyson Fury down to the ground. Darren Till looked like Daniel Cormier taking down Tyson (laughs) Fury. That was like the best takedown I've ever seen. That's how that's how easy it was that Darren Till, who's never ever wrestled a day in his life, is able to just like lift up a six foot eleven man. Yes. Uh, Um, but Francis Ngannou hanging out with Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson's giving him some advice. And I don't know if I was interpreting it wrong, but I felt like Francis Ngannou just had everything Mike was saying backwards. 100%. Did, did you see that video? I sent it to you. I think I said the same thing. I was like, okay, so Mike's like, what you got to do is he's going to be doing this. Uh, so what you need to do, uh, you, you, you know, you said he's going to be like throwing these long punches out. And he's like, what you need to do. And Francis is like, oh, I got to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> and he like leaned he like leaned back, you know, and uh, he like, like, kind of like Izzy leans back in his uh-huh. and he throws his check hook, you know. Mm-hmm. But as he's showing Mike what he thinks, he's trying to finish Mike's sentence. Mike is in the process of finishing his own sentence. He's like, You come in like this. And he's saying to come in like phone booth style and come in really close and go to the body mm-hmm. and to, to cut the distance off. And, and, and he's like, Oh, yeah, yeah, cut. yeah. But it was just hilarious. It was like the exact opposite of yeah. what he was actually saying. So, um, Loved that. I'm betting in Ghana. You're crazy. Think about it. Every fight that Fury had with Wilder, he got dropped like bad. He got not. He got dropped twice in the first fight, and he got dropped I think twice in the second fight. You're crazy. There's no. There's no way. Knock him out, dude. There's no way. And this is gonna be repentance. Boxing. The boxing community is racking up a big bill. At the, at the table right now. They're racking up a big bill. They're like, oh, we just embarrassed Anderson Silva. Who's next? Yo, let's embarrass Nate Diaz. Like, oh, yo, we just embarrassed Nate Diaz. And they think this is all free. They think this is all free. It's all free. It oh, is. we embarrassed Conor McGregor. Oh, yo, yo, we embarrassed we punked him. Okay, okay, okay. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. What about when the fucking heavyweight champion of the world gets beat by an MMA fighter? What about when Francis Ngannou comes in, right? And whoops, Tyson Fury's ass. I'm teaming Ganu. Tyson Fury is a punk. He's added to the punk list. I'm gonna have a list posted. Luke, behind me. get a hold of yourself. You just said you were not getting another one of these pay per views that they're looping you into. <sighs> no, I not another Jake Paul celebrity boxing. Game. Okay, I'll okay, get a, if enough. it's a, if it's I'll watch the monster. I'll watch Inua, and I'll watch uh, uh, you know. Oh yeah, the monster. <laughs> He's the man. So yeah, um, let's move on. Let's let's do it. Um, I know that we're t- taking you guys from really, really, really fun, loose wheeling and dealing talk. Um, the fun times are going to continue, guys, but we're going to get into some serious business, and that's who's going to win these fights. And the first one doesn't get any more serious than this, as far as business. I mean, they say when you when you land, they say business or pleasure. This one's business. <laughs> There's no pleasure in this one. Um, 13 and 7, Andrea Lee versus 15 and 5, Natalia Silva. Um, 
Lutaya Silva coming off a KO win against Victoria Leonardo. Before that, a KO win against Teresa Beleda. Um, before that, a decision win against Jazzy J, Jasmine Juzavicius. And, uh, you know, she's been in the UFC a year now and racked up three wins. So kudos, tip of the hat, and sorry for the disrespect beforehand. Um, I was mostly talking about back-to-back losses, back-to-back decision losses, Andrea KGB Lee. Um, you know, I bet her against Roxanne Mataferi she lost. Um, I bet Andrea KGB Lee uh, wanted her to beat lots of people. Lauren Murphy, Joanne Wood, Roxanne Mataferi. That, that string of three right there, pretty much – Took me off her forever. But then what does she do? She wins two in a row from there. So I'm going with Natalia Silva here. It's uh, it's her time. And it's it's uh, going to be eight years. That's the age gap here. So a little bit shorter, a little bit less reach. But I'm going with the younger, uh, more vicious fighter. The one not out here decisioning, uh, you know, all the time. The younger fighter. And Luke, when she first got in the UFC, we were a little hesitant on her. For sure, but she has relieved all doubt in her last few fights. She is training with one Paulo Costa. She is on the secret juice. She will go out there and rip Andrea Lee apart. Love it. Now, is there any relation to Karen Silva? The next fighter up, uh, Marina Moroz, the Iron Lady, taking on Karen Silva. Killer Karen. Um, 125-pound matchup. Karen Silva coming in 5'5". Marina Moroz, 5'7". American top team, Marina Moroz. You'll remember she fucking went out there and beat up the bad girl, Maria Agapa, for bad a year and four months ago. Since then, uh, eight months ago, six months, you know, after that fight or so, she, or, you know, about eight months after that fight, she lost to Jennifer Maya by decision, a fight where I had Jennifer Maya as a dog, and I believe. And then, uh, you know, she's she had a three-fight win streak in, sandwiched in between two losses. The losses are to uh, Angela Hill and um, – Jennifer Maya. So as much as I don't like Angela Hill, you know, she is kind of a mainstay and she does pick up these wins from time to time. I think Marina Moroz really looked good in that Maria Gapova fight, but it's hard to calibrate. Maria Gapova sucks. She's kind of stinks. You know, she looked so good when she was that gigantic favorite. Um, or no, before she was that gigantic favorite. Remember when she went out there and uh, the, the time she won me my perfect parlay. <coughs> my perfect parlay. <coughs> anyway, um, to me, uh, I think. Maria Moroz is competent enough not to get submitted, and that is Silva's path to victory. So I will take Marina Moroz here. You're crazy. There's no way. Marina Moroz has too much going on, does the Playboy shoots. She's got an OnlyFans. Karen Silva is fighting Killer Karen. She's going to destroy Marina Moroz, and it's not going to be pretty. No, it's funny because usually, uh, like last week, for example, um, we aligned on, let's see. Tatiana Suarez. Yeah, decent amount. Uh, never mind. I, I was just going to say it's funny because when Dan's not here, I feel like sometimes we agree a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I'm thinking of, yeah, I'm thinking of uh, this week's card. You know, oh, we RDA. both had Dubé, we both had Miller, we both had McGee, we both had Blackshear, we both had Marshall. So the first. All right, uh, what are you I, going through this for? No, I'm just saying that, yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> well, we are, it's from the episode before. Yeah, true. All right, so Silva for you, Moroz for me, Silva for both of us in the first fights. Um, or I'm sorry, yeah. And uh, next we got Gregory Rodriguez versus Dennis Chalulin. I always think of uh, was it David Letterman? <laughs> David Letterman? Why David Letterman? Oh, Fuko Fiber. Is that what he is? Is, that what is? is there some reference to Chalulin? Just a funny name. I don't know. Uh, all right. I think of um, the Cholula sauce, hot sauce. Cholula. Um, well, either way, uh, I I can't. I I have trouble picking against Gregory Rodriguez. To be honest with you, I mean, I, he he's kind of. I'm kind of ride or die with RoboCop. I kind of just go with him every time. Um, you know, do, he's down there in Deerfield Beach. Robomacop, the man, lost his split decision to Armand Petrosian in a knockout loss in a fight. He was looking really good, and man, he was doing everything right. He got knocked out by Bruno Ferreira. Um, a guy who is good, you know, really, really good. Um, Cholulin lost his last fight to Jung Young Park, got submitted. A guy Robocop, Robocop finished. Robocop's bigger. Robocop's uh, younger. Robocop, I believe, is better, and I'm going to pick Robocop to win. Um, By submission. Yeah, I'm also going to go with Robocop. I think this one's a 
pretty easy one. I love RoboCop. I mean, dude, Luke, he did get knocked out by Jordan Williams, though. I thought that's that was crazy. The- yeah, that's crazy. You know what I mean? That's like, oh, is that a different life? Like, it seems like that that, that just doesn't that doesn't seem possible. It doesn't seem possible. It doesn't seem possible at all. I feel like you but can I- match it up a thousand times. Like Jordan Williams, the guy who's diabetic. Yeah. <laughs> At first, I, I thought it was the Beverly Hills Ninja. He almost beat up Ian Gary, too, Jordan Williams, right? Ian Gary stinks, but we'll get to that later. Right. <laughs> I'm saying, like, everybody that you put, Jordan Williams has his moments. But, yeah, I, I think we have to be ride or die RoboCop. RoboCop has done a lot for us. RoboCop, Robomacop, as he is the artist formerly known as. Um, he's amazing. And I don't care. I don't care if he loses because it's always an exciting fight. It's like semi the Jedi. He fights for your dollar, and most of the time he wins. Dude, what? man, next up. Oh, this got... is the toughest one. Oh, it's not tough. We got Chris Weidman versus Brad Tavares. Uh, they Chris... both suck. What do you mean Chris it does? Chris Weidman, the All American, uh, once undefeated champion of the UFC, once. The man to dethrone and defeat not once but twice Anderson Silva. The man who did to Anderson what Poirier did to McGregor. He knocked him out and then he broke his leg. Um, Utterly destroyed Anderson Silva in every single way one could do so in a matter of literally almost the same exact time. It's two seconds different. He beat him one minute, 18 seconds into round two the first time and one minute, 16 seconds into round two the second time. Almost to the second. It took him exactly the same amount of time. Almost, almost, yeah. Anyway, that's just really crazy. But, you know, and Chris Weidman, there's a lot of weird seance occult shit with this guy because, you know, not only did he break Anderson Silva's leg almost to the second, and really that's just the ref, you know, waving his arms, you know, two seconds later. You know what I mean? Like it could have probably been, the same exact amount of time, if you really think about it, right? Not only did he break Anderson Silva's leg with a checked kick in 2013, uh, the first man to defeat Weidman was the first man to defeat Anderson Silva in the UFC. But then, if you go up, almost 10 years later, eight years later, Uriah Hall, the last man, the last man to defeat Anderson Silva inside the UFC does the same thing to Weidman that Weidman did to Anderson. Weidman did it to Anderson, his first loss. Hall does it to Anderson, his last loss. Weidman has it done to him. Or, yeah, you get what I'm saying. Sorry. Some voodoo. It's yeah, some yeah. voodoo. I messed it up a little bit there with the time. Like, so you, yeah. Weidman does it to Anderson, and then Hall does it to Weidman. Um, it's very strange, super strange, but you know, both of these guys kind of been on skids in recent memory. Um, it's, this is going to be a throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. I think I'm going to go with Brad Tavares just because Chris Wyman's coming off of a very bad injury. Um, but maybe Chris Wyman comes in and just wrestles the hell out of him. I, I don't really know what's going to happen, Luke. This is I, I, I this can... is the hardest fight on the card. Weidman gets knocked out a lot. But does Brad Tavares have what it takes? Brad Tavares hasn't really beaten any of the who's who. Every time, he's like a stepping stone guy to get to the title. You know? Well, here's what I'll tell you. Brad Tavares, you know, I think is kind of too nice. Um, I don't think he's got a killer instinct. I don't think he's got a warrior's heart. I think he's more of a singer, kind of surfer, kind of chef type, not a warrior type. I think he's a he's a lover, not a fighter, is what I'm trying to say. He's a lover, not a fighter. And um, I think in order to go in there against Chris Weidman and, and a sympathetic figure, he's going to he's gonna be all like, all like, oh, respect Chris, respect, oh, respect. You know, he's going to like, like, oh, like what he's done for the sports and it's so amazing. And it's so amazing to see him come back from an injury like that. I'm saying his interview for him. It's already what he's, you know what I mean? And I feel like with that, like we could get the same thing that happened in the Omariak Madoff fight, right? Omariak Madoff, 20 and four. Should, like, they get coming up, 
Weidman at that point, finished by Sousa, finished by Reyes, um, finished by Musassi, finished by Romero, finished by Rockhold. So we're talking one, two, three, four, five, five finishes out of six fights. He got finished five times out of his last six fights. He goes in there against Omar Akhmedov, takes Omar Akhmedov down for three rounds, boring ass fight, gets the win, and then goes in there next against Uriah Hall um, and gets his leg broken. I think that it. I'm going with Chris Weidman. You're going with Chris Weidman. Yeah, you you walked me off the ledge. You're right. I'm not right. I'm going with <laughs> Alex. I'm going with Brad Tavares. I'm just <laughs> trying to tell you that you know Brad does stink. He sucks. Yeah, they both stink. That's why it's so hard, and you can't fade a bad fighter with an even worse fighter. And Chris Weidman's the better fighter. But I'm going to fade an old, broken fighter with a yeah. young, healthy fighter. He's not young. He's 35. But he's younger than 39. And he's fought more recently than two years ago. In fact, he fought three months ago. Weidman fought two years and three months ago. So if you look at it, like he he's he, it still sucks though, right? Because Brad Tavares still only fought three fucking times in the time that Weidman's been off. Two years, three times in two years. He should have fought six times in the time it's taken Weidman. Split to... decision win against Amari Akhmedov. Right. That's what I'm Common saying. Common opponent. I know. But that was a long time ago that he, that, you know, it's like four years. So I'm going with Brad Tavares. I think it's pretty reasonable here. Um, but I wish right, I'm they switching gave, back to Brad Tavares. Go with Brad Tavares. I wish they gave Weidman in this fight. Who's a, who's a good 185er for them to have had him fight? Uh, that would have put him in a, that would have really knocked his ass out. You know what I mean? Like somebody ruthless. Like who's, who's Driscus Duplessis? Oh, that would have been the best. <laughs> that would have been the best if they had put Weidman against DDP. Holy shit, that would have been great. DDP would have fucking turned his other leg. He would have, he would have broke blood. his other leg right he away. Would have broken every bone Bam. in his body. He, DDP would break every bone in Wyman's body at this point. And I hope that that fight gets made because people will do what they did to Whitaker to Wyman. They will make him the favorite, dude. I, if Wyman beats Brad Devars, I'm calling for him to fight DDP. All right. <laughs> um, and listen, no, you know, here's my beef with Wyman. Wyman, you've been the champion. You defended the belt multiple times. You you went undefeated in doing so. You had some losses. You've been trying to get back on track ever since. But now it's to the point where you have six losses. And a lot of them, if not all of them, are by finish. And you're almost 40. So do the math, Weidman. You have a family. You have kids. They give you opportunities at the weigh-in shows, at the desk. You're being greedy. You're being selfish to your wife. You're having a midlife crisis. This is the equivalent of buying a Ferrari. It's pathetic. It's sad. It's annoying. And you don't deserve any more success in the UFC. All what you're trying to do. And Luke is, would have had this same take if they gave Alistair Overeem a desk job. Okay. If they gave Alistair okay, Overeem a desk job, so he needs to keep fucking fighting. Yeah. He's better looking than fucking Alan Jaban. I would, I would just, he should go in there and just sit next to Alan Jaban just so people can see what a pipsqueak he is compared to Alistair. And Apparently, Alistair's not... very small now. What? Alistair is a vegan now or something. Stop it. Listen, I Alan swear. Is, Weidman is using the injury as this, like, everybody support me. He's like a girl doing a 5K. You know what I mean? Come cheer for me at the finish line, everybody. It's like he's made it so that if, like, if he doesn't win, it's a sad story now. So, like, they've given him an opponent that's fought three times in the last two years and can't even get a win himself and is also 35. So it's like, is that what you want? Is that what we're here to do now? This is the ultimate fighting championship. And you, a former champion, are – Getting matchups that are like strategic so that we can keep you safe in there, just so what you can lay your gloves down and have a special moment. This is not my super sweet 16. This is the ultimate fighting championship. This is you guys have gotten so confused. You fans have turned this into a reality show. You've turned this into The Bachelor. This is not a, a situation where everybody who's that? Oh, I mean. Okay, don't ever show me that again. Stop <laughs> it. I don't want to see that. <laughs> Stop that. That's, That's Alistair Avery. It's like Homer Simpson. <laughs> anyway. Um, but do you get what I'm saying, Alex? Like, this isn't 
it's not Dana White's job to do anything more for Chris Weidman and his legacy. It's not Dana White's job to give him a sash and say, congratulations, you got to win and everything's special and everything's perfect. And now you're, you're Bilbo Baggins. We can put you on the boat and send you out to live with the elves. And even if he did, these ungrateful pieces of shit would still find themselves supporting Bare Knuckle and Dave Feldman and Scott Coker and Jake Paul and doing – everything they could to prop up and help Dana's enemies as soon as they got free. So stop doing these guys favors. You didn't want to do Nate a favor. You wanted to give him Hamzat Shemaev. So because Chris Weidman is friends with Matt Sarah and he's your little buddy and he, you guys love eating pasta together and garlic bread. You can fucking give Weidman Brad Tavares, give him Hamzat. Like you were going to give my boy, Nate, give him fucking Hamzat, give him DDP, give Luke. him Shavkat. At one second. I don't that's know <laughs> that slander. Sarah is off of the garlic bread. He he is he's, he's gluten free. He's like Vinny. He's, gluten he's, free. Like Vinny. he's keto now. He's just gluten free. He can't be eating pasta anymore. Sad, but that, but at least he knows when it's time to call it quits. Unlike Weidman. <laughs> Nothing I said was untrue, and you know, attack me in the comments if it was. I would love that because everything I said was 100 percent true. Think if Weidman's wife washing his fucking shin guards and washing his fucking jock strap you think she wants to smell that bullshit anymore she's done dude she's fucking worried about her husband he's she, you know what i mean like it's enough these guys are like and, and i'm you know you know if you've had i'm not gonna get too personal but let's just say go why well, needs to go buy a corvette and have an affair and get his ass out of the ring if he wants to stay safe all right <laughs> <laughs> have an affair <laughs> Gerald Mershark GM3 taking on Andre Petrosky Andre Petrosky now this fight to me it is resembling a fight that we've seen Alex do you know which fight I'm thinking this fight is resembling Sean Brady versus Bilal Muhammad and GM3 is from Milwaukee Wisconsin knows Bilal very well their buddies their trading partners their friends uh and, you know, I think this could be a case of Andre Petrosky going, oh, it's GM3. He's got 16 losses. He's, he's got 16 losses. <laughs> you know, say, say it in the Philly voice. He's got 16 losses. I'm, I'm supposed to fight not, him ne not, next. Not showing body bags knocked him out. Say that. Say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Joey body bags just knocked him out. I'm Joey supposed Cole to fight him on. I, I'm supposed to fight him next Saturday. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know that he submits uh, GM three and Petrosky is a gasser. Um, you know, he kind of gassed in that Michael Gilmore fight a year and nine months ago, and he kind of gassed in that. He, is, he didn't gas, but he got him. He got a submission in the third round. But uh, he gassed you know, in he, the Brian battle fight. What he gassed in the Brian battle fight on the Ultimate mm, Fighter? Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I'm just thinking that, like, I don't have much faith in Gerald Mershark. I think he's, like, uh, he's, like, after that Hamzat, not, Hamzat literally ate his heart and his soul. You know what I mean? He has no heart and no soul anymore because Hamzat ate his heart and his soul. He scared him to death and took his soul and his heart in that moment. So, it's, like, I don't think he ever, like, when, when a guy hunts him down now, he he's there to be hunted. That's what Joey did. That's what Joe Piper did. He just hunted him down and killed him. You know what I mean? But it's hard to really make that case if you think about it though, right? Because after that Hamzat knockout goes on to win three in a row, all right, drops the decision to Jockey, looks like a different guy there, but then guillotines Bruno Silva in the third round and then gets knocked out by Joe Pfeiffer, but then hilariously goes and grapples Joe Pfeiffer and loses again by a decision in Fury Pro Grappling 7 last May. <laughs> <laughs> oh my uh, gosh. How embarrassing. I mean, yeah, I think, I think the Enzo Gracie Philly team has – has the book on this. I just worry if, you know, is Petrosky dumb enough to underestimate GM3? Is Petrosky dumb enough to gas? And if either of those things are true, he loses his fucking fight. So I need to see a line. Do you think he went to Wildwood at all? Do you think he's been to Wildwood at all this summer? Uh, I hope not. I don't think he's that type of guy anymore. I think he could have been at Wildwood this summer. I, I bet the over-under on how many times... He's, he's been, been to Wildwood four this summer. I'm gonna say four. I'm gonna say it's, it's, it's August. I'm gonna say he's been twice in June, twice in 
in July. And I'm when you say Wildwood, I'm assuming you're just talking about any any beach like Avalon, Cape May. No, he's so a wild. Like he's a wild. Guy. He's a he's a Wildwood type of guy. No, dude, no he's way. definitely a Wildwood type. He's of guy. got the kid. He's got a little kid. He's not going to Wildwood. He's going to Ocean City. All he's right, I take the Wildwood. That's. That's not, that's not good ring IQ. It's not good. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. How many I'm times? Wild was fine during the day to bring up a kid. A lot of punks at night, though. A lot of punks at night at Wildwood. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just gonna go with Andre Petrosky here. I think Gerald Mershart absolutely stinks, and he has no wrestling. But this has Jeremiah Wells. Uh, I I have similar feelings about this one it could go the same exact way as the gerald and my fight. wells fight like but now, I, I think that Mer- gerald mershart is smart enough to not get submitted by petrosky 100 yeah exactly and to manage his energy but i just think he mershart's a little too hit or miss uh these days and i'm just if i have to bet whether or not he's even going to show up in good form you know what i mean and, and on top of everything else like that's just too much yeah right you yeah Exactly. Interesting fact on this card right now, not a fight heavier than middleweight. So, real light art, light artillery here this evening. <laughs> um, okay, Marlon Vera. This is a not what fight. the Boston boys want to see. They want to uh, see a couple. They're a, bunch, no, they're a bunch of little mealy, little wiry guys themselves, dude. There's no big boys in Boston. They're all little chain smoking, fucking dock working, fucking five o'clock shadow ketosis ass fucking pack of cigarettes and a black coffee you know like oh my gosh when you zoomed out i thought danny just got on or something and i I got so excited no 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 say i'm wrong um okay you know this fight this is such a stacked card i mean once you get through the first two fights it's literally all gas no breaks until the fucking end then the last eight fights of the night are are all gas no breaks um marlon vera taking on pedro munoz marlon vera you know, I can't say a bad word about him because everybody loves him. Mar- Action Bronson loves him. Like, everybody's friends with him. So if I say a bad word about him, now all of a sudden, like, I'm not allowed to hang out with the cool kids. But I don't like him because the way he fights, <laughs> he's constantly having to be talked to by Jason Perillo, a.k.a. Jesse Pinkman. He's always like, hey, man. <laughs> Sorry, I hurt my voice. He's always like, uh, hey, uh, Vera, can we, uh, you know, maybe, uh, can we maybe uh, went around here? You know? It's like... You know, between Marlon Vera and Mackenzie Dern, if Jason Perlow had a hair in his head, he'd have fucking pulled it out by now. Because these two don't listen. They don't fight. And they sandbag. I mean, it is crazy. Um, so Marlon... And that, he Vera, never had that problem with Michael Bisping. No, no. He, Bisping, he said jump. Bisping said how high. How high. <laughs> uh, all right. Um Pedro Munoz, though, another frustrating bird, you know, loses to Aldo, loses to Cruz, draw, I, uh, coward, coward, coward against O'Malley, coward, 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 how many times do we say it? He's a coward, a stain upon his name, a scarlet letter, I'm done, Pedro Munoz, P for pussy, I'm picking Marlon Vera, even though he fucking is just a jokester in there sometimes, he, as Uncle Weezy would say, he pulls a lot of stunts in there. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. He pulls a lot of stunts in there. You know what I mean? It's like he's he's losing the round. I mean that Rob Font fight. You know the core, and then also it's like he's got some Ecuadorian fucking whatever Tyson Fury does in the back uh, the back fucking room to to make sure that like a judge still gives him a crazy ass decision. Like Corey Sandhagen beat him like a drum, and some yeah. judge still thought he won that fight. Let alone, I thought he lost every round. Let yeah, alone. no, that that was. That was absolutely insane, and that was the one where Perillo was like, "Is everything all right? Are you are you hurt? Is something wrong? Like, can we get a little pace in there? Can we push the pace at all? Like, we need to get behind our job a little bit. We can't be just waiting for a flashy knockout at the end, like you've been getting lucky with against old men. Um, when you've been getting your ass kicked, Dominic Cruz was kicking your ass, Frankie Edgar was kicking your ass, and then you got lucky with a knockout at the end. You would have lost those two Rob fights. Font doubled him up in strikes. Like, if it wasn't for the damaging drop, like, the shots that he dropped him or those times he cracked him and wobbled him and had big moments. If, like, if the Rob – I mean, I don't know. I, I think if the – is was the Rob Font versus Judah fight in the Apex? I'm just wondering. I'm like, was that – like, because, like, I feel like he stole those rounds, a lot of those rounds. But if you look at the metrics, if that was a boxing match, Rob Font won that. It that was in the Apex. Headlined at the Apex. Okay, never mind then. 
But I was just saying, like, the, it, it was – Rob Font outvolumed him. Vera landed more damaging shots if you, you know, want to be – Damage is the main criteria now. Yeah, but the thing is, it's that – that what's – what's to – if something makes a loud sound to what end if somebody, if to somebody what wobbles end? are they damaged what you know what I mean? it's just like it's a little bit arbitrary you know sometimes i hear a sound it's loud as fuck but it's just because it was slapped against the glove mm -hmm. anyway i don't want to get into the nitty-gritty go 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 you're picking marlon bear yeah 100 percent. all right but he's he's he he lives to lose fights. He loves to live he, he loves to live dangerously. He loves to sit on the edge of the edge of the ski lift when it's going up. You know, he he likes that last minute win every single time. And you know, he could lose this fight to the young assassin or to the young brothers. punisher. Yeah, I mean he plays by the Diaz brothers rules, you know. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Guys with a lot of street machismo are dangerous to pick in fights because that is the kind of stubborn ego that should have been beat out of them in the training room already by this point. Martial arts should have instilled a quiet confidence and a, and it should have already sh sanded down. The but you would have soul. thought losing to old ass Jose Aldo would have taught you that, you know? Yeah. Well, that's something they both have in common. But you, and you know what? Aldo could still be doing it. I mean, that fight with uh -huh, Rob, 100%. Like, Rob, Rob did no damage, you know? Like, if, if, if fight with Rob again. And that's another thing. Fucking um, Aljamain Sterling, who we're going to talk about later, coming out and being like, you know, all these guys want to say I'm boring and then go and take Rob Font down for five rounds. You can never talk about what me and Rob do and like standing up for his little honey pie, Rob. It's it's just the cutest thing. These guys, you know, everybody loves a good buddy cop story and uh, they both fucking suck. And I don't like either of them. Yeah um said said <laughs> <laughs> i gotta go fill my cup up again but uh take everybody through just the basic like measurements of the neil versus gary matchup and then okay. uh, and then when, when we get back in all right the tail of the tape one second taking down the timestamps. i know you boys love the timestamps. I, I i gotta be diligent about it while i'm doing it or it won't happen next up we got Jeff Neal and Ian Machado. Hands of steel, Jeff Neal. The future, Ian Gary. <sighs> it's interesting. It's a 32-year-old man who turns 33 in a, in a week after the fight happens. Then you got Ian Gary, 25, nine months, two days old, young, long, handsome, 74-inch reach. Jeff Neal, 75-inch reach. But the future has a 4-inch height, height advantage at 6'3". Jeff Neal at 5'11". Jeff Neal coming off of a loss. Coming off of a loss in his last bout against Shavkat Rachmanov. I thought Jeff represented himself pretty well in that fight. I really did. Whereas Ian Machado Gary... He surprised me in his last win against Daniel Rodriguez, especially when he struggled with Kanan Song and Gabe Green. Um, even Darian Weeks. I mean, I really have not been impressed with the future whatsoever. If this is any, if this is any met, uh, you know soothsaying projection of what the future will be. I don't want any part of it. I don't want any part in this future of a guy who isn't that good getting rubbed off, changing his last name. Um, just, <coughs> I don't know, Luke, go on because I already went through the metrics. I already talked about the height. I already talked about the age. I already talked about the reach. I talked about their last few fights. Uh I mean, to me, the, the, the pick's Jeff Neal. Um, Ian Gary got the steam coming out of his ears. He put a shirt on. If you guys don't know, had Jeff Neal's mugshot from when he had his DUI. And it said the future. Um, and, you know, guys, it's like Ian Gary has gotten dropped, you know, cracked, rocked, hurt in a lot of these fights. Kanan Song, the aforementioned Jordan Williams. Um, 
and I'm not as, you know, I, I don't like guys who um, want to be Mr. Family Man, but then they, you know, McGregor, Alex, anytime you turn on TMZ, what's he doing? Coming out of the, coming out of the shadows, coming out of the woodwork with, with uh, other ladies nearby, you know, it's, uh, that's what TMZ is showing at least. So I'm just saying, you're a family guy. But you love McGregor when when him and McGregor are on the yacht. What's going on? What kind of things are going? McGregor on? McGregor was a Family Guy before he got the title, Luke. Remember that? D. Delvin was I'm everything. Too. McGregor's probably still is a Family Guy, but I'm I don't. I, I, hey, look, I'm I'm not allowed to hang out with other women. Okay, I'm kidding. I'm allowed to do whatever I want. But um, Ian Gary, Ian Machado, um, I don't trust them. I don't like them. I think that him and McGregor probably have yacht parties and there's probably other women on board. And I think um, he is uh, not getting invited on Conor McGregor's yacht. You don't think he, he's getting invited on he is, he has never met Conor McGregor, guaranteed. I just, these are just, except, except for maybe when he was a little kid, he may, probably took a picture with Conor McGregor when Conor McGregor still had Viking braids in his hair. When well, this is a challenge. Gary. McGregor, if you really love Ian Gary, you'll invite him on the yacht and there will be several bitches aboard as well. Okay, if you love Ian Gary, treat him like a friend. What a friend would do is he would have him on his Lambo yacht. He would have a ton of women, like more women than you could shake a stick at. And you and Ian would do what you guys do. You know, what we all imagine the McGregor lifestyle is. You know what I mean? And I want that for Ian. You know what I mean? There's a, we, we've had our differences, but he's a rock star. He's a champ. And he deserves to be on that yacht with McGregor and the bitches, if there are any bitches. So, um, he's getting cut off from the McGregor family as soon as – I just know that – uh, Mrs. Machado is going to watch our video because she stalks us, and I just want her to be like, no! I don't want her to be on the yacht with McGregor! <laughs> He's going on that yacht! He's going on that yacht! <laughs> if I have anything to say about it, Ian, Gary, and McGregor are going to be on that yacht with the ladies. If I if I can get in... if That's why I was happy you were saying McGregor wouldn't have him on the yacht. Because McGregor will see that and he'll say, of course I'll have Ian, me boy, on the yacht. Get on the yacht, Ian. You know, then now they're in Ibiza. Now they're in Capri. Now they see Dan off the coast of Capri. They throw a snowball at him. <laughs> you know McGregor, he keeps a couple snowballs in a cooler. Like it's that movie Snow Day. And he pees on him and he throws him at Dan. You know? <laughs> um, in all seriousness, the Vittori family has Dan tied up at this very moment. The crime, Vittori crime family. Uh, they were not happy that Dan's allegations against Marvin and and uh, it was by Mrs. Machado's orders. <laughs> you're telling me the Machados and the Vittorias have teamed up. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you the Machados and the Vittorias have teamed up. They had a, the enemy of the enemy is my friend. Yes. 100%. No, this is, and, and I'm the, I'm the only inside operative into the Machado Gary family right now. I'm, 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 I'm in the deep state. I, I'm I sending and Gary messages. You're the only like, one who has access to their social media. I'm I'm the only one. I'm the only one. I'm 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 deep state operative right now. I, I send right, Machado and Gary messages. This show, this show, you know, it is it is a drama. It is a sitcom, if you will. It's a situate. Rob Dyrdek once said he said, you know, my reality shows they're more situational comedies, and that's what this show. This is a situational comedy. And if you watch the show long enough, last summer, you know that Ian Gary's wife broke bad on me. Um. And had a whole, she attacked me, my family, and DM'd me and said some very hurtful things. And I have the screenshots. Um, but here's the thing, you know. She deleted them all too. She, she deleted them and then she blocked us from all social media. Um, but she broke bad and it's fine. You know, no hard feelings, no beef, whatever. But all we said was that he should have fought Brian Battle and Brian Battle called him out. That's all we said. Um, instead of making fun of Brian Battle and pulling the ladder up from, from, uh, you know, and, and pushing him down and saying, no, there's only enough McGregor yacht club women for me, Ryan. <laughs> Dude, he gets on that yacht. He's changing his last name to McGregor, and that's final. <laughs> it's, it's, the final name change. I mean, be Machado McGregor. He's going to get rid of the whole Gary thing. Yep. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to take Jeff Neal. <laughs> this is a this is a pride pick this is a back my brother pick yes i am in the deep state yes i am a deep operative yes i do keep tabs on ian gary and yes i do send him messages and, and tell him i'm his, his biggest fan because i am i think a loss is the best thing for his career right now and that is why i'm rooting for jeff hands of steel neil and this is a this is a hill to die on bet this is a put your balls on the table die on this hill bet you're gonna be wrong but who the hell cares 
live Jeff with Neal it. Looked damn good in that Shopcott fight, and he put. Up, and if you remember, when I picked Shopcott to win, I picked him by decision, and that would have been the first time in his career he'd ever been to a decision, and that's that. That was out of the respect I had for Jeff Neal being a formidable foe, believing in himself. Really, that was all that mattered. Jeff Neal didn't get the memo that he was supposed to lose that fight. Even after he pulled out because of an injury, everyone said, you're a pussy. You just don't want to fight Shavgat. You knew you were going to lose. He said, book it again. I'll fucking fight him. I just had an injury. Then they booked it again. He fought him. So he believed the whole time he was going to win that fight. That's all I need. Like Juliana Pena believed she was going to be Amanda Nunes. That's all I needed. So when Shavgat choked him out, there was like five seconds left in the fucking fight. I almost cashed my Shavgat by decision bet. It would have been like plus 1300 or something. So this one... um, Shavkat, Shavkat puts Ian Gary in a coma in the in the octagon under the unified rules, right? Like, let's be real. Like, yeah. Shavkat's head, if, if their heads collide, then Shavkat's head's double the size of Ian Gary's. His head and harder. Is, and, and harder. He's harder, from the Caucasus Mountains. Harder, dude. That head is, you could throw a fucking cue ball from a pool table at Shavkat's head and he wouldn't turn around. So I'm, t- I'm going with uh, Jeff Neal here, um, you know. It's Fady and Gary. It's, you know, Fady and Gary all the way, all day long. Um, around around here. He'll receive no support from me because he was mean to me. Cody Garbrandt versus <laughs> Mario Batista. Um, another, another real punk, uh, Cody Garbrandt. Tattoos all over all over the place. I'm just kidding. Cody's actually salt of the earth. You all know he helped that little boy, that little boy from his hometown. He brought him into the ring with the belt. Everybody loves Cody No Love. He says, you know, he's one of those types. You call Cody No Love. He's got the tattoos, but guess what? He actually has a really sweet heart. That's the thing. He's, about a, he's him. like a Eminem, you know, hard exterior. Oh, those. no, Eminem. I don't like Eminem. Eminem's. The candy? It's like M&M's, the candy. Okay, yeah. not the With a hard candy. exterior with a, with a nice warm chocolatey inside. Yeah, Eminem, the rapper, doesn't have any love for anybody. He's very rude. <laughs> he's very, very rude. He's been rude to a lot of people. Did he ever apologize to, like, I don't know, anybody that he insulted on his rise to the top? Now, all of a sudden, he wants to be everybody's friend. He's like, oh, hey, hey. He goes to the Grammys. He's, like, shaking everybody's hands. like, what about Moby? What about uh, fucking... Christina Aguilera and uh, you know all these people you made fun of. Nick Cannon. Did you apologize, he's, Nick Cannon? He's still making apologize? fun of people, dude. He's still making Will fun Smith, of people. Will Smith, did you apologize, Eminem, Marshall? He's no, still making all. fun of people, dude. He, he's, he's still, still out here. It's, it's not good. And then MGK says one little thing about him, and he has a temper tantrum to the high heavens. It's it's super crybaby energy if you ask me <laughs> rules for cbe me, crybaby energy. i'm allowed to make all the jokes but no one better make fun of me like come on but at the same actually actually now that now that i think about it eminem was coming back at a lot of people a lot of people came at eminem luke you have to remember that who even knew who he was to come at him when he hit the scene he was unknown. Anyway, I, I don't listen. This is not the Eminem show. Um, this, is not the Marshall, <laughs> this is not the Marshall Mathers LP, the Slim Shady LP, or the Eminem show. This is, in fact, this is Curtain Call. So, <laughs> Curtain Call, Curtain Call the Eminem show. Damn, I am fucking hilarious. All right, let's move on. You're on fire. References, references, references. Um, Okay. Like, I don't even like Eminem that much. I just need four Eminem albums off the fucking top of the room. Recovery. There's another one. Okay. Um, <laughs> and now let's recovery and get back on the Now let's recover and get back to the show. We're double certifying Neil. Interested to see what Dan has to say about that one. Cody Garbrandt versus and listen, the, the Neil pick is Jeff Hands of Steel. Neil, he's also got a head of steel. He's also got a body of steel. He's also got a coach named Safe Sayud, who's the man of steel in this bitch, and is gonna take everything James Krause worked for, harness it, and get a championship himself. So Safe Sayud, get in there with Jeff Neal, and you better get a fire lit under his ass. I don't care if you think it's lit enough, turn it up another notch. Be, be I like, don't know. I don't know if Megan Anderson was right. Brandon Moreno is a diva. He takes up a lot of time from the coaches, Luke. He's done now. <laughs> Brandon Moreno he won the title. He's back in Mexico. He's having fun. <laughs> Brandon Moreno hasn't left the Lego store since he won the belt back, all right? He lost. Oh, right. He lost. Against Pantoja. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I picked Pantoja, and he won. Of course he did. I, I, I'm like, I, you know. The cannibal. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. So Brandon Moreno, he's chilling, dude. He's <laughs> nonetheless he's still in the lego store <laughs> all right cody garbrandt mario batista open and shut case for me um mario batista 
Um, even though, you know, it's kind of an interesting matchup. He's got a loss. His last loss was to Trevin Five Star Jones, who, you know, they matched up and served Cody Garbrandt to him. And listen, Trevin, if you see this and you think this guy's being a dick to me, I want you to know that every time you fought, I've commented on your post. I've said I put five stars with five star emojis. I've said, let's go five star. You got this. I've supported you through all your losses. I talk very positively about you on the show and I've picked you time and time again on the show. I love your fighting style. I love Guam. Ask anybody. I talk so much positive shit about Guam on this show that it would make your head spin. So now I have to be a little bit mean because I saw your posts about how, oh, the UFC shouldn't have cut me because of the Cody Garbrandt fight, blah, 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 blah. No, they should have. It was piss poor. It was an opportunity that you absolutely blew. Enough fucking losing. You have to win to stay in the UFC. I'm sick of these guys. Win to stay in the UFC. There has to be wins in the UFC. Um, and that was your fight, man. That You didn't pull the trigger. You know, that was sad. That was your ninth loss. And I have to – I'm sorry that Sherman Five Star Jones has to catch us straight here. But let's just – you know, I mean – sorry. It was his fourth loss in a row. Um, you know what? They should not have cut him. <laughs> they shouldn't have cut him. But they should have given him one more opportunity. They should have given him one more. So – I will say that they shouldn't have cut him, but he should have known that it was a possibility when you lose three in a row. I remember the day you don't lose two in a row in the UFC. So, yeah. So I'm going to go with Mario Batista as one well. second. How different Trevin Five Star Jones's career could have been if after he beat Tamor Valiev, right? Which was ruled a no contest. But after he smokes Tamor Valiev as an underdog, he actually gets that canceled bout with Randy Costa and beats him in the second round. And then he beats Mario Batista, like which actually happened. Then he actually gets that cancel bout against Tony Kelly and knocks him out. Then he gets the cancel bout against the now retired, chronically staff ridden Ronnie Lawrence and beats him because he's not that good either. Mana Martinez easily <laughs> fucking Trevin Fester beats him. But no, that wasn't his bout order, even though it was scheduled and canceled. That wasn't his bout order. He had Sedjuk of Kakramana. And he never Gavin pulled Kostrat and Hody Baloney. And so he didn't pull out of one of those fights, Luke. What? He didn't pull out of one of those fights. How do you know? How it says fuck? it on topology. It says Costa injury. Kelly withdrew. Lawrence oh, botched know, weight cut. Check it, so I didn't see it. On the Martinez withdrew. Every single one of them Is withdrew. It, okay. All right. Okay. Clip this and send this to Dana White. I don't know if he knows this. Trevin, if you see this, clip <laughs> this. Send this to Dana White. Point that out to him because that's bullshit. You got dealt from the bottom of the deck here. You had – you were going to be dealt very good opponents for where you were at in your career. And all of a sudden they started hitting you with guys who eight, eight and two, 11 and 0, 16 and three, 12 and, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to make a case for you here, buddy, but it, it's not going to be Cody. Yeah. Cody I mean, you already put all the mustard on his jacket and said that he should have got cut, but you know no, what? No, no, no. I mean, I'm I, just saying like it's a possibility when you lose four in a row, but when we looked deeper into it, there was a case to be made, but don't make me look deep into it. Go to Bellator PFL or fucking any other promotion, get three, get a win, get two wins, then come back. That way we don't need to fucking make any exceptions for anybody. We don't need any four loss exceptions for anybody. Sam you out. know all these guys who want to get back in the UFC, their managers, like if you want to get back in the UFC, go to the LFA. <laughs> it's on fight pass you will get more eyeballs on you do it through fight pass the ufc will like that more than going to bellator maybe 100 percent. that's good business um but yeah mario batista he only has two losses trevin five star jones who we respect we respect a ton around here and Corey sanhagen who luke is in and out on he, he doesn't know which way he is on uh cory anderson ever um Trevin Jones beat Mario Batista on short notice. Uh, that is a ripple to that. Um, but Mario Batista, Batista has been on a crazy streak. It seems like he's really hitting his stride. And uh, the boys at the MMA lab are doing well. He's got a very diverse game. And I think Cody Garbrandt is just a slang him and bang him type of guy now. Yeah, I will never pick Cody Garbrandt uh, in a fight for the rest of his career. I can promise you all that. I will never pick him again. Well, I'm sure um, you said I think you said that. <laughs> let me let me look at his let me look at his career and see when you said that. I, I guarantee you said that before the Hafiel Sons out fight. You definitely said it when he got knocked out by Pedro Munoz. Go back Munoz. and check the episode. I don't when know. when he when he got knocked out by Pedro Munoz with some which was before which was before we started the podcast. 
you were like, I am 100% out on uh, no love. Well, I think, no, I think actually I picked Cody to beat Kai Kara. I know I did actually, because I said he can wrestle him. So, um, that's so know. dumb. I, I might have too. <laughs> I said he's gonna big brother him, you know. I didn't I didn't think Kai Kara was gonna win. I don't I don't think. I don't know. Did I? I gotta go back and check. I don't know. Uh, but we'll see. So I know I picked Rob Fawn against him though. I, I don't know. Whaley Zhang versus Amanda Lebush. Really, really disappointed here. I thought uh we were gonna get a different matchup for Whaley. I thought it was gonna be um Na Liang, right? Or nine. It was supposed to be Henry Cejudo, I think. <laughs> I thought it was supposed to be noun, nine yanan, you know. <laughs> I I like the the nine felt like it was just part of her name at first. Yes, yes, it was supposed to. Be, I thought that he, I thought nine yanan. She beat Mackenzie <laughs> Turn and then she beat Jessica Andrade. I thought we were going to get her in there for a super China matchup. Um, her versus Wei Li, China versus China. I don't know why we're not doing this, but. I don't have any respect for Are they teammates? Over the way she fights her trains. Um, she got standing choked, right? Oh, yeah. No way. No right, way. Who was that? Who was that that she got standing choked by? Uh, Jessica Andrade. Oh, and she stinks to the high heavens. She's so bad. <laughs> Jessica Andrade is so bad. She doesn't even want to be there anymore. She loses on purpose these days, it seems. Um, in a million years, I will not take uh, Amanda Lemos here. Over Whaley Zhang because Whaley Zhang's a good fighter who competes to win, fights hard. Um, a split decision loss to Rose in her last fight. Um, you know, two years younger, same height. You're gonna think that Lemos is taller, she's not. Um, you're gonna think <laughs> she's got a longer reach, she doesn't really. And uh, I'm going with Whaley Zhang emphatically here. Let's check the odds. I'm gonna while you talk about this, I'm gonna pull up some odds real quick. No, I mean it's an open truck case for me. Like if you're getting choked out, if you're getting rear naked on the foot by uh, a girl who is five inches shorter than you, Wei Li Zhang is going to cut through you like a hot butter through knife. Wei Li Zhang is going to win this easy. How does Amanda Lemos win? Take her down, submit her, maybe. Doubt it. I don't know. It has to rock her on the feet and submit her. Um, There's no way she rocks her on the feet, though. There's not a single shot Lemos and not, rocks her on the feet. Oh, late Wei Li Zhang is minus three seventy favorite. So that's not five, terrible. It's a, it's a five round fight. So Luke, um, that is not terrible for how much he should be a favorite. I say yeah. inside the distance, um, and Wei Li Zhang. But I here's think that's some respect a good for Jeff Neal. I mean, Neil's a plus one thirty six dog. Like it's pretty much a pick'em. Beautiful. Yeah, all these fights. Rodriguez happen. was pretty close to him too, but Rodriguez just went out there and did a stinker. I'm just. It was thinking. the opposite of that Alabama boat brawl. The guy with all the tattoos and stuff got his ass kicked. Alabama boat brawl. Yeah, th- there was preppy boys fighting some workers on a dock, and uh, it got turned into a complete brawl. Oh, I did see this, actually. I didn't see the whole thing. I bookmarked it for later to just revisit because it looked pretty intense. I wanted to really piece through it myself and slow it Oh, my gosh. It's, am- it's amazing. I saw one guy yeah. swimming to get to the fight. Yeah, yeah. It, it was amazing. It was the what a f- move. It- Why would you do that? <laughs> Why would you swim to get to a fight? Then you're going to be the- drenched when you get there. <laughs> Imagine showing up to a fight drenched. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, but, so- dude, like they were like hitting people with plastic chairs. There was it was an Allen Iverson situation where maybe a woman guy with a chair in the mix. Who knows? I, I saw like two big guys like pounding on a woman at one point, like like two guys like like jumping a woman. I'm like, what the hell is going on there? So it seemed like pandemonium. All right, so we're gonna both go with Whaley Zhang, the big favorite Magnum. Uh, then we got um, the main event. Aljamain Sterling has to be a, like a minus six hundred, right? No, 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 no. Uh, he's like minus two thirty, I think. Well, let me see. Um. Well, while we do that, though, just what are your thoughts on it? I don't know. As much as I'd love to pour some sugar on me, because I don't really like uh, Aljamain Sterling, 
I just feel like Aljo has a lot more ways to win. Minus 295 on FanDuel for Aljamain Sterling, plus 220 on FanDuel for Sean O'Malley. So, I mean, I liked it better when Sean was like plus 330, uh, I think. I think I saw that at one point. But I, I'm going with Sean, man. I I, I just Headshot think that, dead? Headshot dead? Headshot dead. I think that Sean's going to knock him out in front of the whole Boston crowd. I think he's destined. Um for some reason, even though he's from Montana and Arizona, he's like also from Boston. He wears like that Sugar Sean Celtics jersey thing. So yeah, I mean, I'm. It's just because he has an Irish last name, Luke. <laughs> O'Malley, yeah, I'm rocking with O'Malley. People are gonna say like, why? I'm gonna be like, well, because when the fight's over, he's gonna be the one with his hand raised, and Aljo, you know, like he, why? He's gonna knock him out. He's gonna knock Aljamain Sterling out. Simple. I know something that looms large is that um the the little Punisher what's his name the mini Pedro Punisher Pedro Mundo the mini Punisher Pedro Pedro Munoz Punisher. the little bit of punishment that he can take and then he just <laughs> he, he waves it off he waves the whole thing off is isn't he in the PFL now he's fighting on this card he's fighting Chido Vera oh. I, I get him in. Um, you're, you're thinking of Marlon Marais. I, I I get him and Marlon Marais mixed up quite a bit, quite a quite a bit. Um, wait, so the young Punisher never knocked out Aljamain Sterling. It was Marlon Marais. I got incepted right there. It's a Bernstein Bears situation. Um, Marlon Marais knocked this guy out first round easy. I think that. I mean. Peter Jan's wrestling, we found out, sucked against Aljamain Sterling, right? Like, we found that out. Al the way to beat he's Peter Jan. He's not a Russian wrestler guy. He's, he's not, not really a Russian wrestler guy. He's like Thailand, strike, Thai kick, Thai kick. You know. You know that you know what goes on in Thailand. I, I don't need to I'll let your I'll let your imagination run amok. Okay. He's he's not a wrestler. But <sighs> Henry Cejudo. Olympic champion. Do you think that he did Sugar... get Aljo down? Who? He did... Henry took him down. Yeah, but it was hard. <laughs> it was hard. And Aljo also took him down. An Olympic champion. Do you think that Sean O'Malley, of uh, dusty bones, very, very skinny man, skinny boy, skinny clown, do you think that the skinny clown is going to be able to hold up against that steel? I am very interested in yeah, the way. I do, I do. I think he's going to get his back to the cage. He's taller, and he is going to pit, switch his hips and dig in an underhook and turn. And Aljamain is not going to want to get exhausted, so he's not going to do a ton of wrestling um, unless it's going to be there for him. And I think all O'Malley is going to be focused on is where I need to be to not be taken down. Sugar Sean he, O'Malley never wrestled, fought a wrestler, Luke. He's never fought a wrestler. Uh, you're getting fooled. Uh, Andre Sukumta took him down. Andre Sukumta. Come on. That Luke. was a long time ago. It was, but if, if Alger's game plan is he's going to take him down for five rounds. Peter Yan took him down. It was a split decision win against Peter Yan that people thought Peter Yan won. Luke. You're be, uh, listen, do whatever you want. Go back to the wrestler. I think he's I the anaconda. To. He's the human backpack. He's so annoying. I don't want to take him. I, take I really him. don't. He's smart and he has a great coach and he's got a great system. He's got he smart doesn't have great him. coaching. He does. He's got a smart people around him and they're they're going to encourage him to not, you know. Look like My thing is, he knows the, he will like a fool if O'Malley beats him. But if yes. he wins, he can walk off with the belt, go fight Volkanovski, go do something big at 145, make him do an interim situation. This is the last hurdle for him. This is the last hurrah. But this is not. A and sport. Luke, that is why I'm hesitant. That is why I'm hesitant. He's what already thinking song? about, huh? Exactly. And what's the song that's like? So much for my happy ending. I don't know. I'm just saying, so much for his happy ending. It ain't gonna be a happy ending because there are no happy endings in the sport. Somebody's younger, faster. More hungry comes and takes what's yours. In every and Luke, instance. if you saw like just one month ago, he looked fat. He looked fat as hell. He just had that fight with Henry Sudo. Yeah, he and this is a quick turnaround, and he cuts a lot of weight. I think what looms the largest right now, this is one where your lying eyes will not deceive you. If Aljamain Sterling is looking bad on the scales, 
pulled the Brinks truck up to Sugar Sean O'Malley. Aljamain Sterling will not be able to last, and I don't think Sugar Sean O'Malley is going to get submitted. Yeah. Listen, but it, it it's going one of one of two ways. It's either going to be a knockout, a split decision, Sugar Sean O'Malley that everybody says that Aljamain Sterling won, or Aljamain submits him, or gets a very dominant decision. Here's I guess four said. ways. Here's here's what I think is going to happen. Aljo is going to try to take him down in the first, fail, and be knocked out. He's going to try to take him down. Sugar Sean's going to get his back to the cage, dig the underhook, turn his hips, pivot. The crowd's going to go, ah! And then Sean's going to go, like, he's going to, like, do that thing he does where he faints and faints like crazy and, and just invades his space super quick. Overloads. Overloads he's gonna throw a spin. Him. He's going to throw an elbow. He's going to throw – the only thing, it might take a two-round or three-round situation if Sugar Sean – does that at first too much and gets taken down as a result yes, of spinning around from the shit. spin. But I don't think Aljo has the cardio to hold a big, long guy like Sean down for five fives. He does Especially if you if saw – two rounds to get it done, he'll get it done. Especially if you saw how big he was a month ago. This is going to be a hard weight cut, a super hard weight cut, quick turnaround, quicker turnaround than he's been in as the champ. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. I think that the – Way ins loom large. I'll go with Sugar Sean O'Malley. If Aljo is smart, I'm going with Sugar Sean O'Malley, Luke. I'm 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 turning heel. I'm going I'm going with the are? poodle. Yeah, it's I'm going, going with the poodle. Yeah, let's not tell Dan what our pick is because he'll pick Sterling. Oh, he'll definitely pick Sterling, and he'll be right. Well, I just want to give before we run through our full picks, I want to give everybody a records update. So I'm 92 out of 144. My uh, points reflected on the screen are accurate. I'm 63.8. Uh, You're not shared. Report fantastic you're not uh, sharing the screen i'm not i'm, I'm oh. not trying to. uh trophy certified picks are 67.6 percent <laughs> um accurate so 68 percent essentially and uh we finished year three with triple b certified picks the picks that all three of us <laughs> agree on being 70 percent accurate and now here pretty freshly into year four we started year four in may we are 68% accurate. So not only were we able to maintain a 70% average for a year, but now as we've begun year four, about, you know, a few months into it, we're still maintaining 68 to 70% average on triple piece of red picks. This is fucking phenomenal. This is very good. What was your record uh, last week? My record last week was on 7-11. Yours was 8-11. I mean, that's like you said, if we're counting. And what was Dan's? Uh, no, if we're not counting the uh, one, the Woodson fight. Oh, well, I didn't. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what was Dan's? Dan's four out of 11, but we didn't get his revised pick. So maybe he'll come on the show and be like, I up- I didn't check his like open bet sheet or anything. So maybe he updated, but you know, he went down with, uh, in Chukwi, Tucker, Kamor, Bahamundes, Barcelos, and Wells all in a row. Mm. Um, you know, so. Four out of 11. So Dan is 84 out of 144. He's in second place. Alex trailing Dan by two picks. He's 82 at 144. Um, and I'm 92. Uh, so I'm 10 correct picks in year four. You've been on fire. Ahead You've of been Alex, on fire, and I am eight ahead of Dan. And 48 out of 71, 68% accurate are she'll be certified um, picks. So really doing phenomenal, all of us. Uh, 82, I mean, you know, your record, 82 out of 144, that's still 57%. So you're almost, you know, 60%. Went up a percent, baby. Let's go. Well, you're 56.9. Rough. (laughs) Rough. I'll get a point nine. They'll they'll just be like, hey, why didn't Luke round up, you know? But, uh, guys, still, this is, you know, this is Alex's version of a shaky start to year four. Um, and, And Dan, I mean, Dan was... Me and Dan were neck and neck, and and I, we were actually neck, neck, and neck uh, in year three. Dan and I had a lot going on, vacations. Ironically so enough, the final event of year three, uh, it was we were all separated by a pick, a uh, pick or two, and I came out and was able to take the lead and best Dan um, to win year three, ever so slightly. And now um, in year four, I'm in first place by a large margin. So I've pulled my lead ahead. But triple B certified picks have always and will still continue to lead the way at 68%. Um, 
this is wonderful. And uh, man, it sounds like I have fucking. And boys, you want the final thoughts on all of these picks? You gotta sign up for the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Perfect Parlay Pursuit. We will give you all of our revised picks next week. On RDA, this card. You know, Sente Luque, 13 fights. We got to break I'm up. talking about these back. ones next week when I'm not jet lagged and I'm not come. I, I've had a long day, ladies and gentlemen. I've been up since three in the freaking morning. What time is it now? Luke seven. Jeez Louise. It is seven on the dot. And, uh, so what we're, what we're going to do and how the show works, we give you main card and prelims free here on YouTube, and then we hop over to the Patreon. Uh, we get ahead of the line. And as you see, all of the fights that we just broke down are on FanDuel right now, I believe. So um, we can get ahead of these lines. Uh, we're going to study every card twice and give you our picks both early and week of. So we just broke down O'Malley versus Aljo. That card's two Saturdays from now. We're going to hop into the Patreon and break down next Saturday's card for the second time. We already broke it down for free on the YouTube main card and prelims. Now we're going to break down the um, main card and prelims yet again, go through with the fine tooth comb, see if any fights have dropped off or changed, see if any of our thoughts have changed at all. And we got 13 fights to do it. So without further ado, let's hop the fuck back in. Alex and I are going to break down Vincente Luque versus Rafael Dos Anjos, Cub Swanson versus Hakeem Duwadu, Khalil Roundtree versus Chris Dawkins. By the way, Alex, somebody in the comments last week said that you were off your ass talking about Dawkins having a chance against Roundtree. And I responded. I was like, I thought he agreed with me that Roundtree was going to win. Like, what are you talking about? I said round two would win, but I said Chris Dawkins. It's interesting to see that he went to light heavyweight and yeah, I mean, like you he's at a different weight class. I'm... I think people forget. It's like we're making a show <laughs> here, guy. We have to entertain and we have to like. Have you ever seen gap. first take? Have you ever yeah, seen yeah, first like, we take? We got to give people like information as well as entertainment. So like you might know that Dawkins moved down to 25 and you might not think that's significant, but we can't just come in here every week and the pick we think is going to win, give every reason why we think they're going to win and give none for the other side. We have to. Make it and you got to understand, we got to pay respect to our Philly dogs, dude. Shut the fuck up. Chris Dawkins is somebody we picked three times in a row when he debuted on the scene, and I won with him every time he was an underdog. And then I won against him with Derek Lewis. Up until he started becoming a favorite. And then I stopped betting on him because I didn't think he was going to win anymore. So No, you you. I picked him against Lewis. Okay, fair enough. I picked him against Derek Lewis. After he won me money as a giant underdog three times in a row, he comes in as a slight dog against Lewis. And I'm like, yeah, like I'm going to pick him again. Like, fourth time's charm. So, yeah, I mean, it didn't. What I should have done that night was cash out. I had like a fucking, or hedge out. I had, I mean, I had like a $1,600, I don't forget what it was, but it was like a massive profit if, if Dawkins won. And all I had to do was like bet a little bit on Lewis. <laughs> I was like, nah, we're good, no hedge. So, guys, we got a lot of crazy fights to break down. Dolgarian versus Frankie Marshall, McKinney versus Breeden, JP Byes is returning, Josh Frem, Stefan, and Chuckwee. We're going to break them all down top to bottom. Let's just go through our full picks for O'Malley versus Aljo. Two weeks away, UFC 292. I'm going with Sean O'Malley, Whaley Zhang, Mario Batista, Jeff Neal, Marlon Vera, Andre Petrowski, Brad Tavares, Gregory Rodriguez, Marina Moroz, and Natalie Silva. And it's so funny that I said, oh, look, we're not picking all the same picks. We deviated on one fight, and it was a lady fight. <laughs> yes, which so, means... I have both of the Silvas, and Karen Silva's the only one Luke and I differentiate on. But if you want me to say... I don't even really feel that strongly about Moroz. So if you want, I mean, like, we can just have all our picks be the same. (laughs) This is crazy. (laughs) See, Luke's trying to box me out. Luke's trying to box me out, make sure that I... I'm winning, and Alex is learning. And he's now conforming (laughs) to my winning picks, because I've been getting... I mean, let's just look at it. 7 out of 11, that was my worst night in the last 5. 9 out of 11, 11 out of 15, 11 out of 13... Uh, 10 out of 13, it's it's double digits, you know what I mean, over here. Uh, so let's go 10 out of 10 on this 10 fight slot. I already bet it myself. $10 will win me like 1300 if it pays out. So let's get it. Let's go. Luke Avers to sign on the Patreon. If you want in, hop over. Let's go, baby. Don't be a brokey. 